Hi, welcome to OT Rex. Today we will be covering some clinical hand tests. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I decided to go over these because I feel like there are so many and a lot of them sound similar and it just gets overwhelming. So I picked out some of the most popular ones and the most common ones that I learned about and used while I was while I was in a hand outpatient setting, an outpatient hand setting. There we go, can't talk today. Let's start off with the Finkelstein's test over here. And I, I'm starting here first because it's sort of as a standalone compared to the other ones, and you'll see what I mean by that. So the Finkelstein's test is a test for the query veins, tenosynovitis of the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. So that is a mouthful. But the way you test this is really easy. You just have the person make a fist, and then you're going to stabilize their forearm, which you can't see mine, and then you're gonna ulnarly deviate their wrists. So this is the ulnar side, and that means that from this view, we're just gonna tilt that down. And from the side, it's gonna look like this. And what we're doing there is we're really stretching out this tendon. So if the tendon sheath here is inflamed, that's when you have the tenosynovitis. So when you go like that, it's gonna cause pain in the distal radius right here. And if you have pain, then you have a positive Finkelstein's test. All right, so from Finkelstein's, let's move on to the Fallon's test. This one is a test for carpal tunnel syndrome. And remember the carpal tunnel is for our median nerve. And the way I like to remember this, as silly as it is, is you are falling into a tunnel. <laughs> so then I think of carpal tunnel. Um, and this one, as I said earlier, tests for median nerve compression. And in order to test this, what you're gonna do is hold that position for 60 seconds. And if you experience any tingling or numbness, then you have a positive Fallon test falling into a tunnel to test for carpal tunnel with the Fallon test. Super silly, I know. So I made a little link here with a red with Tunnel sign because Tunnel sign tests for a variety of things and I wanted to specify the difference. So we're gonna go down here because this one is also testing for carpal tunnel syndrome. Tunnel can test for carpal tunnel as well as cubital tunnel, so I'll do this one after. But remember that Tunnel and Fallon are both able to test for the carpal tunnel. But I want to also say that Tunnel is mainly used to test for carpal tunnel syndrome for median nerve compression. And for this one, we are gonna use percussion. The way you use this test is to tap along the wrist proximal to the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel is right here. So that's where we're gonna be tapping. So someone who has signs of carpal tunnel, when you do this, it's gonna cause tingling numbness near that nerve. And I drew a little hand right here to indicate where you'd feel that numbness because this is like where the median nerve would innervate. So it would be these first three fingers and the radial half side of your ring finger, so that's where you would feel it. So Tunnel and Fallon, carpal tunnel. So moving on to the other test for the Tunnel, you can also test for ulnar nerve compression at the cubital tunnel. And I know this is kind of confusing since Tunnel can be used for two different things. Oh, I forgot an H there. I must have been writing too quickly. Gotta fix that. Think meant think. So think tiny tunnel for the pinky side. So if it says that you are trying to do an ulnar nerve test, then you can think tiny tunnel for the pinky side, which is the ulnar side. And for this one, you tap along the peripheral nerve for tingling. And I drew a little hand here and it innervates the pinky and the ulnar half of your ring finger, which is the opposite of the median. So that also makes sense. So if you have any tingling or it starts to feel painful on that um, peripheral nerve on the ulnar side, then that is a positive tunnel sign for ulnar nerve compression for cubital tunnel. 
Moving on to Fromants. I don't know if it's Fromants or Fromants. Fromants and Genie sign are very similar. So starting off with Fromants, this is a test for the ulnar nerve palsy and any damage to the ulnar tunnel, which is also called the Guion or Guion's tunnel. This, is, this one is also related to the cogwheel effect, and that's in essential tremors. So sometimes they will refer to it as the Froment sign, just FYI. To test for Froment sign, all you have to do is give your client a piece of paper like this between their thumb and the lateral side of their index finger, and try to pull the paper away from them from the opposing side. If they have very weak grip and the paper slides out, or you see that they are flexing their IP joint and their thumb in order to compensate for the muscle weakness, then this is a positive Fromont sign. It also indicates adductor pollicis weakness. You can also ask the person to make an O shape with their thumb and their index finger and see if they can make a round circle. If you see that their thumb IP joint is flexing and they're compensating again, then that is a positive Froment sign as well. This is very similar to the Genie sign, but the Genie sign is also looking at your pinching strength and for ulnar palsy. But the main difference for the Genie sign is that we are observing the MP joint of the thumb for hyperextension, and that is gonna cause pinch weakness when you're grasping paper. So the test for genie sign is exactly the same as the Fromont's with the uh, paper pulling, but instead we're really focusing on looking at the MP joint. So this joint right here is gonna sink in and hyperextend. <laughs> I'm gonna link a picture of that one. And so that means that you have an unstable or a weak adductor muscle there on the thumb of the MP joint. And um, that also can look like hyperextension, which I can't do because my finger is uh, okay there. So that's the main difference. So this genies is looking at the MP joint for hyperextension and the Fromont's is looking at the flexion for the first IP joint. But I want to quickly add that the way I remember Froment sign is a Froment moment. I just added that. And I think of how a moment is very short. It's just gone. So when I think of our fingers, I think of how our pinky is short. And that's the ulnar side. So Froment moment short testing for the ulnar nerve palsy. Genie sign also tests for ulnar palsy. And this is very specific to me, a personal story. I babysat for a family when I was in high school and the mom's name was Jeannie. So I babysat her little kids, Jeannie's kids. So I think of little kids, Alner again, small. I don't know if that's gonna help you remember it, but that is how I remember it. Froman, Jeannie's, same thing, Alner palsy testing. Fallon's, Tonell's, both tests for Median nerve compression, carpal tunnel syndrome. Tunnels can also test for ulnar nerve compression of the cubital tunnel. And Finkelstein's is all by itself testing on the radial side for de Corvain's synovitis. Hope that's helpful and good luck studying. I'll catch you guys next time.